What you don't know about soda, chocolate, and your own tongue could be keeping you from your ideal weight. So here to give us some real scientific proof is Kirsten Sanford. She's a PhD in molecular, cellular, and integrative physiology. Thank you for being here. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. So we're going to have some fun today. Food. Soda. Everyone loves soda, but people don't realize how acidic it is. It is very acidic. It's about the same acidity as the hydrochloric acid that's in our own stomachs. <laughs> it's pretty Which acidic. Which is pretty acidic. <laughs> and, and we've got some vinegar up here and soda there. So let's do the litmus test here. All right. We're going to take a look at it and dip. So we can see the color differences, right? The two on the ends, they look fairly similar, and the one in the middle is different. And the one in the middle is just plain water. And these two, the vinegar and the soda, yeah. are highly acidic. Highly acidic. But, but debunk one myth. Everyone yeah. talks about, OK, soda's acidic, and it's going to make my blood acidic. It's not going to make your blood acidic. Your but let's talk about what is bad in soda. Yep. Sugar. And you know what? Everyone says, well, sugar's bad for me. That's fine. I just drink diet soda. No problem. So this is sugar, mm -hmm. and these are sugar substitutes. The neat thing is that you can use much, much smaller quantities of the sugar substitutes than you can of the sugar. And Kirsten, so that every now and then, you know, I like a diet soda, OK? Yeah. And I think this yeah. is no problem for my health. But now all these studies are coming out saying drinking diet soda you know what, you still are at re increased risk for diabetes and being obese because, because you're taking in the sweet tasting soda, it's going to make you want to have that piece of chocolate cake that maybe you would pass by if you were drinking water or, you know, things that are a little so bit more healthy for you. So caution. But yeah. let's talk about taste buds because there, there's a yes. misconception out there. I want to show this old graphic of what they called the taste buds. They said that, okay, yeah. bitter taste at the back of the tongue, sour on the side, sweet kind of in the front middle and salty. Yeah, and this is the old map and it's totally wrong. There are some areas that maybe have more of one kind of taste bud or another, but the receptors but we have 10, are 10,000 taste 10, buds 000 and they can buds. taste a bit of everything, but there's mm -hmm. also what's called super tasters out there who have more. And and we actually we have two <laughs> audience members who want to come up here because they're picky eaters. Mark and Debbie, come on up. We're going to put you to the test. And these super tasters, they really do have really strong taste buds. They have more taste buds, and there are more taste buds on a super taster's tongue. So now we're going to test and see whether or not you're super tasters. And picky eaters might actually be super tasters, because if you have more taste buds, you're, you have more, of, more flavor that you're experiencing in your mouth, and so maybe things that are bitter are way more bitter. Maybe things that are sweet are way too sweet. Maybe things that have a lot of fat in them really feel fatty in your mouth, and so you're like, I don't want to eat it. And so you're going to take this dye. This is blue food coloring, so it's completely non-toxic. I'm not doing anything. Can you just stick your tongue out? I love and painting. And Kirsten is actually I going always wanted to be an artist. To count <laughs> you taste your buds in your right mouth now. For a second. Just put your tongue in your mouth. And, okay, stick it back out again. So... What I'm looking for are pink dots, larger pink dots, and you're on the lower end of a normal taster. You're a normal taster, <laughs> all right! <laughs> <Woo -hoo. laughs> we don't know if you're a super taster, but you do, you're a picky eater, right? I am. I'm very particular, too. Yeah. Well, thank you for being a guinea pig up here. Yes, I want to ask you a favor. Yeah. Yeah. Kirsten and I are going to ask you to take a little bite of this lemon. Okay. Just stick it in there, All suck right. on it, and tell, let us know what it tastes like. Mmm. <laughs> sour? Sour. Very it's sour. Very Anyone sour. who's had a lemon knows it's sour. Oh. Well, interestingly enough, there is this miracle fruit, and how do you pronounce it again? Sensipalum dulcificum. And it's from a, it's a plant from Ghana in, the, in West Africa. And these little tiny fruits actually can make bitter things taste sweet. Why don't oh. you try one of those? And people, okay. you just chew on and it. Chew on uh -huh. it. How does the fruit taste? <laughs> tastes like wood. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious. Well, the, the better question is how does the lemon taste after that? That's okay. The best one. Yeah. Let me taste it. Mmm. Really? Tastes like lemonade. Tastes very sweet. 
That's exciting. It's great. <laughs> I'll have more. And so this effect, can I try this? Yeah, you can try okay. it. The effect lasts um, 20, 20 minutes to about two hours, depending on the person on, on how much you eat. It's it does good. taste like sweet wood. <laughs> Not bad. Really, it's not work. bad. And so this is really good for people who want to lose weight or who want to go on some kind of diet because it will make things that taste maybe bitter or not sweet taste sweet. Exactly. Cereal is fortified with iron. Mm -hmm. For good reason. We need iron for healthy blood cells. Right. Prove to me there's iron in that cereal. All right. Yeah, cereal manufacturers, they actually add elemental iron. And this is a big magnet that I'm using right now, is attracted to magnets. And we can... You so the flake is actually stuck to the end of the magnet now through there you go. And if you've ever wanted to play with your um, iron supplements. <laughs> it's kind of it's fun a fun game you can play at magnets home. Magnets and iron supplements, yes. Well thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Mark and Debbie, thank you for volunteering. Thank you so much. Have you ever eaten something really hot and burned the tongue or roof of your mouth? Well, we have Dawn on the phone from Sherman Oaks, California, who has a question about this very common problem. Hey, Dawn, what's going on? When you eat a hot slice of pizza and it burns your tongue, does it permanently destroy some of your taste buds? And is there a quick way to ease the pain? Hey, do me a favor. Hang on the line for a few moments. We're going to be answering your question when we ask our doctors next.